Hey, welcome to Left Foot Media. My name is Brenda Malone. Well, recently the organisation Cancer Research UK embarked on an important public awareness raising campaign about the link between obesity, being overweight, and the risk factor that that presents for certain types of cancers. Now, they had billboards that were published around the United Kingdom, like this one here, and on the billboard it says... Guess what is the biggest preventable cause of cancer after smoking? And then with the play on the whole game of Hangman or Wheel of Fortune, you're supposed to fill in the blanks and you are supposed to guess that obesity is the leading cause. And obviously you'd be right about that fact. Now this obviously is an important health message. It's an important piece of public health information. And clearly this is an attempt to try and at the very least motivate us to think more deeply about these issues. Hopefully it will spur us on to some kind of action, maybe some personal lifestyle changes or some sort of engagement of some kind about this. And I don't think it's all unfair to call it a serious public health crisis that is related to obesity and cancer here. But this is where things get interesting because a UK-based Danish-born comedian Sophie Hagen took exception to this billboard and this is what she tweeted about the campaign. Right, is anyone currently working on getting this piece of shit Cancer Research UK advert removed from everywhere? Is there something I can sign? How the f is this okay? Now quite frankly, this is a completely irrational response to a very important and pressing health crisis that the general public should be thinking about and effectively should be taking some sort of responsibility for. Now, we all understand as adults there are going to be people around the fringes of this issue who, for whatever reasons, their weight is a lot more difficult to control because of perhaps certain genetic predispositions or medications or illnesses or whatever is going on with their personal physiology that has a bearing on their ability to uh, maintain a healthy weight. We all understand that, but that group is in the minority. Right? The vast majority of people who are dealing with these issues are people who have made lifestyle choices, who have made behavioural decisions, and those behavioural and lifestyle choices are now having a very, very serious impact, not just on them, but upon all of us, upon wider society, especially in an environment like the United Kingdom, where a lot of people would be relying on publicly funded healthcare to help address these issues that are predominantly related to behavioural and lifestyle choices. So this is an important message, it's hugely important, and her response to this message is to say, well, my feelings are upset because I am one of these overweight people, and how dare you remind me or point out the fact that overweight people like me are at an increased risk and are in a dangerous position because we have an increased risk and predisposition towards cancer. Now, quite frankly, that's insane. What she's asking for here is this important public health message to be silenced. She is asking to be shielded from important scientific facts that have a bearing on her and other people like her. Now, this is insane. This is not a rational reaction at all. Now, before you sit there and think, well, Brendan, you don't really understand what it's like. You don't know what it's like to have to deal with the, the issue of being overweight and the stigma and, and all those kind of difficulties and things that go along with that. Well, let me stop you because in actual fact, I do actually understand what it is like to be overweight. This is a photograph of me that was taken approximately 17 or 18 years ago. I can't remember exactly when, but it's about 17 or 18 years ago. And as you can see in this photograph, I weigh a lot more than what I do right now. In fact, I was dangerously overweight in that photograph. I weighed approximately 138 kgs at the time that photograph was taken. And that is well outside what you would call even slightly overweight for my size. I was dangerously obese in that photograph. And I remember what it was like. I had a doctor who gave me important health messages about my weight. And I remember it was difficult at times to have to hear them and to be reminded of this or to read messages of this kind, but they were hugely important. And in fact, my doctor would have lacked humanity and compassion if he had stopped telling me those messages just because he thought my feelings were more important than hearing the truth. This is so very, very important. The truth is actually far more important than your feelings. It is that simple. And in this case, I needed to hear those messages and I was eventually got to a point several years later where I had to take some sort of responsibility and I started to take responsibility for my actions and I experienced behavior change as a result and lo and behold, 
my body weight started to decrease and I found myself in a much healthier place. Now, currently, I'm healthier than I've ever been before in my life, I would probably argue, but I am also still slightly overweight. I carry about probably 10 kgs or so, thereabouts, of excess weight on my body uh, that I shouldn't be carrying for my size. And I say that as someone who every single day, without fail, goes out for a one hour vigorous and physically demanding walk. I also, six out of seven days, am in, and engaged in about probably 10 or 15 minutes of strength tra uh, training each night. And on the weekends, I try and include perhaps some sort of boxing workout as well. I also practice intermittent fasting, where two days a week, Monday and Thursdays, I drop my calorie intake right down to about a third of what it normally would be, which has been, I found really, really beneficial and a very healthy thing to do. And I also have very little when I'm eating normally those other days. I, I would try and avoid the, the bread, the rice, the pastas. Uh, I, I cut out some of those unnecessary carbohydrates. Now, that, that's I know that because I'm, I'm doing that because I have to take responsibility for my own health, not just for my sake, but for the sake of my family as well, my wife and my kids. And it's about my behavior and the decisions and the lifestyle choices that I am making, right? So my rea reaction to a campaign like this is, yeah, this is an important reminder. It is not to withdraw into my own little bubble and then irrationally demand that you stop telling me the truth just because I happen to find the truth a little bit confronting for me and where my lifestyle is at at the moment. Now, in response to Sophie Hagen's tweet, Cancer Research UK replied, and I thought very graciously, with the following two-part tweet. Hi Sophie, our campaign isn't meant to make anyone feel bad about their weight or make anyone think negatively about people who are overweight or obese. Our aim is to raise awareness of the link between cancer and obesity. As, after smoking, obesity is the second biggest cause. It is our duty to inform people about this and lobby the government on policies which will help us all to keep a healthy weight. For more info, head to our website. And then obviously they've posted a link to their website at the end of the tweet. Now this is where things just ascend into a really striking example of how postmodernism, relativism, Marxism, identity politics has just come together in this perfect storm to create an insane situation where, in response to what I think is a pretty cordial response to her uh, original tweet, things just go up a whole nother gear and we get this extreme identity politics driven and very anti-science response. And what I mean by this is that basically what Sophie has done here is in true identity politics style is she's taken one particular trait about her, and, and obviously that's her weight in this situation, she is presently overweight, and so she has focused in on that particular uh, trait about her as a human person, and then she has collectivized that trait and created a collective identity. You know, the, the people who are fat, the people who are overweight, they are part of this collective, this group of people, and she defines herself by that particular trait, and she defines this group by that, that, that for, for that group of people that she's collectivized herself with, this is their defining trait. And now they've collectivized this trait and they've decided that anyone uh, who wants to challenge them about, around this particular trait or say things that they consider offensive about this particular trait must be shut down and must be silenced, even if what they are saying is scientific fact. This is astounding. This is absolutely astounding. Science be damned as far as she's concerned because it's more about feelings than it is about science. So let's have a look at the several tweets that she responded in reply to Cancer Research UK's reply. What your campaign is doing is so incredibly damaging that I can't even begin to describe it in only 280 characters. There are many people who have tweeted me their articles about it. Try reading those. There is no excuse for you to have this campaign up. Now, whenever someone responds to an issue where there might be a bit of emotion involved, and they start by saying, I can't even begin to tell you how wrong you are, which is effectively how she started this tweet, it's always a good indication that they aren't really coming from a strong, rational, well-thought-out position. They haven't really reasoned their way to the position they, that they hold, and they're about to start uh, enunciating. Instead, what they have done is they have allowed their emotions and their feelings to dictate what is about to come next, and that really does seem to be the case 
place here. She then goes on in her next tweet to say this, and you can absolutely go away in terms of trying to excuse it. Society viewing fatness as a negative thing is a thing that kills more than the cancer you might get due to maybe something to do with you possibly weighing more than a certain weight, possibly, maybe. And this is where the anti-science rhetoric really starts to come to the fore. So for example, the opening part of the tweet where she tries to declare that people having negative experiences about encountering these important scientific facts and, and health messages uh, kills more people than cancer does that is caused by being overweight, this is absolute nonsense. This is a complete scientific falsehood. And then when she goes on to say that maybe there's possibly a link and sort of implying that who really knows, again, we know that being overweight, being obese is a health risk. It puts you in a dangerous health position for certain complications and conditions that can result as a result of you being overweight or obese. Now, regardless of how you got there, even if it's not lifestyle choices that put you in that situation, maybe it is genetic, maybe it is the fact that you're on certain medications that have a bearing on the way that your physiology works and, and you gain weight really quickly and it's difficult to lose it, etc., 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 for people in that situation, it's still not a healthy position to be in. Your body is not designed to carry all of that excess fat, to be overweight. It's not a healthy position at all. She then goes on in her final tweet to say this, and BMI, that's body mass index, has been debunked decades ago. It's not a valid way of measuring anything. On the contrary, dieting has been proved time and time again to be one of the worst things, I, I guess she means things, you can do to your body. Your campaign is so damaging and fat shaming, and I really hope it gets taken down. Now, there's several errors in there. First of all, the body mass index, yes, it isn't the most reliable indicator of what your healthy weight should be, but it hasn't been debunked decades ago, as she claims. It is a general rule that based on your height and your age, that there is a sort of healthy weight range that you should be within. However, the body mass index is a bit of a blunt instrument, and it's not like a scalpel, it's not precise, it doesn't take into uh, account all of the factors that might have a bearing on why a person of a certain height and age, their healthy weight range, uh, you know, might not be strictly as the body mass uh, index indicates, but it is still a reasonably good sort of starting point to jump off from. And then obviously you want the experts to give you a whole lot of nuanced advice on top of that based on your personal situation. So it's, it's kind of not true to sort of write the whole thing off altogether. Secondly, when she goes on to say, dieting has been proved time and time again to be one of the worst things you can do to your body. It depends entirely on what you mean by dieting there. If you mean some sort of yo-yo dieting where you go up and down, up and down, your weight is constantly yo-yoing back and forth, then yes, we know that isn't good for you. If you're engaged in some sort of dangerous dieting practices where you malnourish yourself, where you try and lose five kgs in five days and, and, and you're not eating and, and you're not eating the right foods or you're starving yourself, then yes, that is not good for you. If you're engaging in some sort of pointless fad diet, you know, if you clip up the toenails of adult hedgehogs and sprinkle them over a grapefruit and you eat two of those a day, you'll lose a kg a week. Now, that is not good for you either. And it's often it's just pointless. It doesn't really do a lot. It's an attempt to try and find a quick fix to something that actually requires hard work and a bit of effort. Or the, some of these fad diets can be dangerous and problematic. And so if that's what you mean by dieting, then yes, I would agree with you. However, the claim as she has made it here that dieting in general is not good for you is again is simply not true because dieting can actually mean reducing your calorie intake. If you reduce your overall calorie intake because you are eating too many calories for your body size, that is not bad for you. That's actually a really good thing to be doing. If by dieting you re you mean changing your nutritional habits and, and excluding certain types of food and focusing instead on other types of food groups that are missing from your diet, then no, that, that's not dangerous. In fact, that's really good for you as well. If you mean adjusting your eating habits based on certain factors and conditions that are specific to you, you know, changing your diet for that purpose and for with the express intent of trying to uh, maintain or gain a healthier weight, then no, that's not bad for you either. And her final statement here about fat shaming is a classic example of what happens when you collectivize an identity around a particular trait 
And then you start demanding that everyone must uh, maintain an absolute fidelity to what you believe about that particular trait. They must never say anything or do anything that you consider to be offensive or to be hurtful to your feelings. Now, it's not uncommon to have this situation in our society. It seems it's becoming more common because of identity politics. More and more people are collectivizing themselves into these little splintered groups around the place based on particular traits that they might possess. And it's becoming more and more common to hear people demanding that you must not say or do certain things because we, the people who identify with that trait, consider what you're saying to be offensive. And it's not unusual to hear people saying, well, we don't think you should be able to express that particular view or idea, and you should be silenced for having that view or their, that idea. I mean, you could go into the, the metaphysical question here and the philosophy of why is this happening, but I think it's pretty simple. What effectively happens is you've got a, a group of people who are more interested in their feelings being considered to be paramount as opposed to what are facts. So feelings now are elevated above facts, and you are not allowed to declare those facts uh, if, if I consider them to be offensive to my feelings. Now, it's not unusual to have people say and do this in our society. It's, it's been a long-standing issue in human history. But normally it's about different views and opinions that people are expressing. In this case, it is about a scientific fact that she considers offensive. She considers the scientific truth to be offensive simply because she doesn't want to hear it. And she's now demanding that scientific truth be silenced because she considers scientific truth to be offensive. Now that, as you can imagine, is extremely troubling. This is a classic example of this relativistic postmodern tendency where nothing is true unless you say it's true. Everything's a social construct. What's true for you is true for you, but it might not be true for me. What's true for me is true for me, but it might not be true for you, including basic scientific truths. And like I said, where does this leave us as a society when we are at this point? Because you see, if we splinter off into these little identity politics groups, these little uh, collectivized groups based on traits, then we no longer have a shared common vision. If we no longer believe that the truth is something, that reality is something that we can actually come to together as a group and to study and to delve into. Instead, we believe that every individual is constructing their own version of reality and that should never ever be challenged. Then we have a breakdown in our society. We are no longer a group. We are no longer a community. Instead, we are just a group of fractured individuals who are living in our own little ideological silos and we no longer have a shared common vision, which we used to, we called it reality, that connects us and binds us together. And that is extremely troubling. As per usual, I'd love to know what you think. So please let me know in the comments section below. If you like the content I'm creating and you want to see more of it, then please support me on Patreon. There is a link in the description below and there'll be a link on screen at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Left Foot Media.